What you see before you is called a spinning armillary. It's often incorrectly referred to as a gyroscope and is used uh, to represent planetary orbits. This particular spinning armillary consists of three metal rings mounted 90 degrees offset from one another. It has LEDs, servos, and slip rings within the rings to cause it to light up and rotate automatically. Last year I tried to create the same spinning armillary but failed miserably because I used the incorrect parts and had no time whatsoever. Rather than using metal bars as the skeleton for the rings, I used plastic tubing which was uh, flailing around and very flimsy. It could not hold itself up, so I had to keep the structure very small and couldn't make it as large scale as I wanted. In the end though, I ended up getting it working. However, I wasn't able to make it as spectacular as I had hoped initially, and I had to keep fixing it over and over again because it was essentially breaking itself apart as it ran. Since I wanted to create everything out of metal, I needed to make a roller bender to bend metal bars into a constant radius circle. So I bought a welder to make a crude roller bender out of nuts and bolts and bearings and then use that to bend the aluminum bars into a constant radius circle to make the aluminum rings. So I initially bought some JB Weld to epoxy the metal bars into a proper metal ring. Since the inner part of the rings will have LEDs on them, I wanted to make sure that there were no shorts, so I applied some electrical tape to the inner part of the rings and then cut them down to make them flush with the outer edge. So it turned out that the JB Weld didn't actually work that well in terms of tacking the ends of the metal bars into holding the ring shape. So instead I had to drill some holes and then apply a nut and bolt to hold the ring shape. So this is the old brackets that I had printed before. Uh, as you can see, over here it snapped off there and there. So I need to take these off and then apply this new set that I have printed out here that's all in white. I had created an initial set of brackets that worked but ended up snapping because they were too frail to hold the parts together. So I had to unmount them and then reapply a new set of brackets which were much stronger Okay, so I have two old holes from before, so I'm just going to reuse those uh, mounting points. However, the new screws that I have are a slightly a bit thicker, meaning that I need to widen these holes a little bit and then drill through the 3 d printed part and then put the washers and nuts as I did before. So the first step was drilling the holes and then putting in the nuts and bolts to mount the brackets of the slip ring. Once the brackets were attached to the rings, we could run the wires from the slip ring through the holes and then mount the slip ring into the brackets themselves. The next part was mounting the brackets of the servos onto the rings. Every servo automatically comes with a mounting brace for you to be able to mount anything onto the servo itself. So I had to just mark on the 3D printed bracket where the holes for the mounting brace are so that I could then drill a hole and then mount the 3D printed bracket to the mounting brace of the servo. So now that's one, two, three rings all bracketed. Now all that's left is putting the LEDs on the inside of the third ring as I have done the first and second one. And then attaching it, and then wiring it all up and then attaching it to the outer uh, base that's going to be holding all of it. So this is the initial frame I had set up when I was testing it with only two rings. I need to now modify this to work with three rings. So I need to widen vertical bars 
to be offset a bit horizontally so that they encapsulate the third ring and then just mount the brackets on the outer part of the third ring to the wooden vertical bars so that it fits properly within the frame. I felt as though I needed to revamp the frame entirely so I unscrewed all the parts and then cut them to size to get rid of all the old holes that were drilled into it previously. Finally, I had to mark on the wooden beams where the 3D printed brackets would sit and then drill the proper holes to fit them into place. The spinning arm literally looks fairly good just sitting on its own on the floor, but it would look infinitely better standing up proud amongst a crowd of people. So I decided to make a pillar stand as a, a base for this to sit on. So here I'm mounting some legs to this pillar so that it can stand upright and not fall over. However, when it's fully standing upright, it's too large to fit inside. So I needed to make some temporary legs for it to stand so I could test it and get all the wiring done. Here I'm attaching the last LED strip to the inner part of the outer circle. And then I'm soldering power, ground, and data so that I can communicate with the LED strip. Soldering in the air is probably the most difficult method of soldering. My solution to this was to put a dollop of solder on each pad and then go back and put the wire against the pad and remelt the solder so that the wire sticks to the pad itself. After finishing all the soldering, I had to make sure that nothing would short, so I applied electrical tape to all the connections so that nothing would touch each other and then short out or cause a misconnection. After that, I had to make sure that none of the wires would interfere with the ring spinning, so I had to secure them by hot gluing them to the outer part of each ring. Now that all the electrical and mechanical parts were all done and everything worked, I just needed to finish up the way that it looked, so I applied some varnish to the wood to make it appear better. So if I go send this all work.